Hi guys, Charlie with Boxing Focus, and let's talk Sergei Kovalev and Jean Pascal. Now, for me, this is one of the biggest fights of the year, actually. I'm really looking forward to this fight. And I think it's an intriguing one. It's actually one of those that I have, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to just decide who I think is going to win. Um, I bet against Kovalev when he fought Bernard Hopkins. I mean, I say I bet, I didn't put any money on it, but I, I, I thought that um, Hopkins would be able to beat him. And obviously that didn't turn out to be the case. Hopkins didn't age overnight, um, but he was old when he got in that ring with Kovalev. And he, you saw he had none of the athleticism required to both move away and then you know, sneakily attack that kind of classic Hopkins lead right style or snap back over with a left hook or something. He just he just didn't have it in him. He just you know all he could do was move away defensively. He had no, there was no way he could actually come back with something offensive and be defensive at the same time. And and he didn't want to get knocked out. So yeah, that that obviously was a, a bad pick. I was just a. <laughs> I was I was caught up romanticizing Bernard Hop, the B Hop legend, um, uh, and yeah, I was I was looking for confirmation bias in certain things. So you look at the Shumanov fight, for example, with Hopkins. I was Hopkins was standing and trading a lot, trading a lot, and I just thought, oh, that's because Shumanov had nothing. Well, it's because Hopkins really, you know, I, th I think if you, Hopkins had had the choice to to not trade and still be offensive. He would have gone that route, um, but I don't think he did have that choice. I think he had to stand his ground in order to fire his shots, and he was—he he didn't feel threatened enough by Shumanov that he, he went on his bike. Saying that, also since the fight, and I didn't know this before the fight, Shumanov apparently struggled to make weight. Um, he actually looked pretty bad. He, I mean, he looked a bit, a bit of a funny colour in the fight, and uh, we were saying that he was basically wasn't feeling very well. Uh, and would potentially like a rematch, but he won't get one. Um, so I think, you know, I mean, you've got to bear in mind Hopkins lost to Dawson, and you know, he had tough but impressive victories over Pascal. Well, a victory and a draw. But I think he saw, you know, Hopkins was uh, dealing with father time. And I think, I think you've got to take that into account when you're assessing how good Kovalev is. Some people have gone a bit overboard saying that, that that fight displayed that Kovalev was a tactical master, you know, a genius at work, and yeah, you know, and it's unlikely that he can be beaten at light heavyweight, and I've not quite bought into the, that theory just yet. I think it was evident from the Hopkins fight that Kovalev is very, very good, but I kind of thought it was very, very good going into the fight. I just I, I guess I expected a, a much better Bernard Hopkins. Some credit for that has to go to Kovalev and the work he was doing, but I don't think all of it does. And that still leaves me in this place where I'm not quite sure how good Kovalev is. Now, Jean Pascal, we know how good Jean Pascal is. He's got significant strengths, but he also has significant weaknesses. But his weaknesses are not the kind of weaknesses that are going to play into Sergei Kovalev's game. You know, he won't stay stationary in front of Kovalev. He'll move a lot. He he, he won't uh, try and exchange with Kovalev. He'll try and he, he does these ambush attacks. He's 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 not technically predictable. He he fights in a bit of a funny way. Throws his punches in a bit of a sloppy, clumsy way. But it also makes it hard to deal with. And and the, of course he's now training under the tutelage of Roy Jones Jr. as well. So so that should add a little bit something extra. And it's, it seemed to do so in the Butte fight. People were saying that. Um, because one, one of the knocks on Pascal is that he lacks stamina. And he's obviously a very highly trained athlete. He obviously puts a lot of work in the gym. He always looks very good coming into fights. But he does tend to fade. And saying that, people said he faded in a Butte fight. And I don't think he did. I think he just carried Butte. Um, he just seemed content just to, to ride the fight out because he, he got it so easily won. Perhaps, you know, I mean... I, Perhaps it might even have been a bit of compassion on his behalf, you know, not wanting to, you know, given that Butte's a Canada native and he didn't want to embarrass him in front of everybody. I just, I just felt that that Pascal was 
coasting as opposed to fading in that fight. And I think I think there's an important difference there, but it wasn't the kind of high intensity fight that it's going to be with Kovalev that perhaps it was in the early goings with Hopkins and and um, you know you could argue against Carl Froch. You could argue against uh, Chad Dawson as well. Dawson was coming back into that fight before it got stopped. So he does have that stamina knock. And, and, and as such, you kind of picture how this fight's going to play out. And, and it's, it's hard not to, to think it's going to be Sergei Kovalev struggling for the first several rounds to deal with, with Pascal's pace and athleticism. And then as Pascal slows and then Kovalev starts to catch up to him, and later in the fight, Kovalev's going to be the one taking over. But Pascal's tough, and people are saying he's going to get knocked out, and I, I don't see that. I don't see Kovalev getting the stoppage in this fight. And honestly, I don't see who's going to win it either. I don't think it's, it's cut and dry Kovalev. Um, I think Pascal's going to steal a lot of the early rounds. The middle rounds are going to be competitive, and then, then Kovalev's going to get the later rounds. So the question is, where, where's that cutoff point going to be? Will Kovalev set a high enough pace that, that, that Pascal will fade quickly? And don't forget, we've got questions over Kovalev's stamina. I say questions, we don't really know. He threw incredible volume against Nathan Cleverley and knocked him out. There's no way he could have kept up that pace for 12 rounds. Against Hopkins, he was very measured. I mean, I was, as much as I was disappointed with Hopkins' performance in that fight... I was a bit pissed off that Kovalev took almost no chances. He didn't really try and, and, and hunt Hopkins down. He just kind of followed him around the ring, taking the rounds on points. He should have knocked Hopkins out in that fight. Hopkins had nothing to offer, and you saw that in the 12th round. So we didn't really get to see his stamina tested at all in that fight. So there is an open question over whether Kovalev can fight hard for 12 rounds because he hasn't had to. You know, the fights that have gone the distance have not been that, yeah. I mean, the Hopkins one, he just, he just the, the pace in that fight was, I mean, it was walking pace. It was easy. I could have fought at the pace that Kovalev was fighting. If you don't, cons- you know, don't take the last round into consideration. Um, but anyway... So, so the, these are the questions that I'm struggling to deal with at the moment. So I haven't quite made my mind up just yet. I don't know whether Pascal... See, I've just got this sneaky feeling that Pascal's got it in him. But the thing is, I actually rate Kovalev as the better fighter now. So, I'm, I'm, I mean, Pascal's got a lot of experience in big fights. Kovalev less so. And I, this is definitely, considering Hopkins' age and performance in the last fight, this is definitely the biggest test for Kovalev so far in his career. Um, I can't see Pascal fighting a very naive fight like, say, Nathan Cleverly did. I can't see um, you know, Pascal being easy to trap and hunt down the way that Hop- uh, the, um, sorry, the Kovalev has, has cornered other opponents and taken them out. And, and I can't see him being really negative like Hopkins. So, so it makes it makes for a, makes for an interesting bout. I just got to think. Or somehow come up with a conclusion on whether Pascal has it in him to to steal enough rounds, because I think that's what Pascal's going to be doing. He's going to be he's going to be looking to chin check Kovalev, maybe score a flash knockdown or two, yeah, and, and be going into the second half of the fight four or five po- points up if he can, because he he must know that he fades in fights. He must know it. Um, so so in a way, I kind of expect Pascal to start quite quickly. Just to, just to kind of stamp his authority on the fight, so he can uh, perhaps you know, make make Kovalev a little little unsure uh, as the fight unfolds. But I think Kovalev will be looking to set a relentless pace as well. So I'm sure that Kovalev believes in himself and his, his conditioning, and, and it's, that's what makes it interesting. It's really difficult to see how how the fight really plays out. Um, Looking for looking for uh, looking for input, I guess. This is Charlie with boxing focus. Not particularly focused on this one, it would seem. Thanks for watching.